Hi folks, I'm Ethan, two guys and riding. Welcome to our how-to video on the 2019 BMW, and this is the uh, 760i M series. So today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Sears Imported Autos, selling beautiful Mercedes-Benz in Minnetonka, Minnesota. All right, so on the driver's information screen, there is really a very limited amount of information that you can manipulate. So basically what you see is what you get. But over on the uh, turn signal stock, there's a button that's labeled, the little arrow is labeled BC. And if you push that, you can get down at the very bottom of the screen, you see is total odometer. And then you get your trip meter. If I push it once, then it switches to um, your miles per gallon. And it'll show you, the graph will show you an instant. And then, if, and then it shows you the battery level on the left. And if I click it again, then I get my average speed and my average miles per gallon. And if I click it again, then it's blank. And if I click it one more time, then I'm back to uh, the, the total trip meter here. But, all right, so we'll go through the drive modes here. This is sport, okay? And if you press it once, you get sport. You press it again, you get sport individual. And then if I go to comfort, it changes the gauges a little bit. And then if I go over to e uh, Eco Pro, it changes the gauge a little bit, turns to a blue. But that is uh, basically, this is adaptive. This is uh, all you can customize on the driver's information screen. So very limited amount of information you can customize. It's a nice, it's a fully digital screen. Everything you see on the screen is digital, um, except for the little silver curves that you see going around the speedometer and so forth. But that is it for the driver's information screen. Next, we'll move over to the infotainment screen. So moving over to the infotainment screen, this is a 10.25 inch screen. Um, it has uh, got the iDrive 7.0 software. It's got a Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which has 20 speakers and uh, 1,475 watts uh, for power and it also has a 20 channel amp. Now basically what that tells you is that every single speaker has its own channel on the amp and it's going to be finely tuned so it's going to be a great sound experience uh, in here. Technically it's the Bowers and Wilkins Diamond Surround Sound. Now it does come with AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, um, and of course na built-in navigation and uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. So uh, there are two ways to control the screen. One is touch, and the other is through the controller that's down in the center console. Uh, so, uh, to start with, this is the, the what we call the home screen. Okay, so you got media and radio, you got communication, you got navigation, um, connected drive, my vehicle, and then notifications. Okay, and if you go here, there's nothing more. Okay, so that's the home screen. Now, if I press this button up here, I can reorder things. So if I click this, I can drag and, and move it. So I can reposition it wherever I want it. So you can do some customization, and then you do get a home button right in the screen. Let's start with the radio and the media. So if I click up on here, okay, I get my sources. So I've got, I just click on whatever I want. Um, you can import music in here. It's got an external hard drive uh, that it'll store some music on there. Uh, it'll show you your phones. Um, screen mirroring, uh, USB, and then you've got some adjustments down here. So let's just go up here, okay, and I'm going to go to FM radio. All right, so the question, of course, is, you know, how do you select a channel? Well, you can obviously just scroll through here and click on whatever you want, okay, or you can go to the magnifying glass here, and then you have sort of a dial that you can spin, and you can also do that with a rotary dial below. Okay. Um, you can use the plus and minus buttons if you want to go uh, digit by digit. And then it'll show up there if it's a favorite. So then to adjust sound, you go back to home, back to media and radio, and then you can come down here, and then you get sound adjustments. So for instance, um, if you have the rear screens, this will show up. But here to control the basic things, you've got uh, tone profiles here. If I click on that, you can select from studio, concert, on stage, movie theater, lounge, uh, and set that wherever you want it. Hit the little back arrow. And of course, you got treble, bass, uh, balance, and fader. And these 
are a drick, click and drag if you want, or you can type, uh, tap on the letters or the plus and minus sign. And that's how you adjust all those. So I'm gonna go back here. If you wanna adjust the rear, you can adjust both displays, left display, right display, or you can go into settings. So I'll just show you one of them here. If we go into left display, then you can set, like if it's an FM, AM, satellite radio, um, music collection, USB screamer, you can set that from here. So you can control it for somebody else if, if you want. They, of course, can um, control it on their own as well. Okay, so uh, you can go here to manage mobile devices. Okay. And if I go back, you can go to a personalized menu, and here's where you can determine what sort of shows up. Anything that's check mark is going to show up, and if you click on the check mark, it disappears, and then presets won't show up. Uh, obviously, I think most people would like to have everything showing. Okay. So we'll go back here, and that's the end of that. Now, um, we, that was all FM, but if you go to AM, it's going to look uh, pretty much exactly the same. So it runs the same. And Sirius XM is going to look the same. We can't show that to you because it's a, it's a trial version. Uh, but um, it'll look exactly the same. You tune the same way and you can save favorites the same way uh, and adjust the sound the same way. All right. So that brings us to communication. So if I click on here, um, I can look under... Uh, I can do contacts, recent calls, dial number, manage mobile devices, and I actually am going to add my phone. So if I click on manage mobile devices, and then I click on connect new device, okay, and then I'm going to say I want, want it to be telephone. So then you go to Bluetooth settings on your phone, scroll to the bottom of the list of things that are connected via Bluetooth, and it'll show up. So it'll say BMW, then give you a number, so you click on it. And you just gotta wait, okay. So yep, that's the same number on my phone. So I click okay there, click okay there. It wants to know if I can sync my contacts and favorites. I'm not gonna do that because it's not my car, but if it was your car, you definitely would want to uh, say yes to that. All right, so it's connecting. And I should, yep, I wanna connect to Apple CarPlay and confirm or do not. Now if I click do not connect, it's gonna go via Bluetooth. If I say connect via Apple CarPlay, then anything to do with my phone will run through Apple CarPlay, including the phone itself. So I'm gonna say connect to Apple CarPlay. On my phone, it comes up with a message that says use CarPlay with BMW 15230. Yes, now use CarPlay. And it'll take just a couple seconds more Ah, then it says app not installed. So I can get it right from the app store. So you just go to the app store and then you get, now I'm just gonna use um, um, what's on my phone currently, but I could download these and use these with the car as well. So I'm gonna shut off my phone for a minute and set it down. I can put it in the, uh, down here. Oh, I think it's too big. Oh, well. All right, so here's Apple CarPlay. Uh, so what you need to know is that this BMW button brings you back to the main BMW screen. All right, now if I go to media and radio, Apple CarPlay shows up as a source, and I'll go back to it. All right, so basically, um, the way Apple CarPlay works here is that these are your most recently used things, although phone always seems to stay right there. So if you wanna make a phone call, then that's where you're gonna wanna click. If I click on this screen here, I go back to the individual apps. If I click it on here, I go to a split screen where I get navigation, navigation commands, and then media. So I'm gonna click back here. You can also just scroll. That's what that uh, button on the left, that the dot on the left is for. And I can scroll through here. Uh, the screen itself is really responsive, but you can see I've got all sorts of things. So Sirius XM on my phone, Pandora, Waze, uh, Google Maps, Amazon Music, audio books, podcasts, uh, Apple Music. So uh, almost, you know, well, a lot of your main apps that you use for media, as far as listening to music stuff, will play right through your screen. 
Okay? Um, and you can also use a voice command button that's on the right side of the steering wheel to access Siri, or if you have an Android phone, it'll access Google Assistant. The difference between using that button for voice command and using it for uh, Siri or uh, Google Assistant is that voice command is a quick release, it's a quick push and let go, and Siri is a push and hold for a couple seconds. So here, we'll try this. Siri, open Pandora. And there we go. All right, so you can, uh, that, that is so cool that you can access that on there. All right, so you may be wondering, well, what about this screen over here that just says Apple CarPlay? Well, it doesn't do anything. It's just another screen. All right, I do have a little tab over here that if I pull, I get another window. Okay, so right now I don't have a, um, a course plot navigation, so I get a really nice compass. All right, now I can say, I want turn by turn. I want the navigation, um, map facing north up, arrow display for your position, onboard info, trip computer, uh, media, a clock, efficient dynamics, driving style analysis, weather, uh, flicker. All right, so let's, let's say that we want to take a look at uh, the trip computer. So then you can have this nice split screen, and any time you want to get rid of it, you can just click on that tab or drag that tab, and it closes it. Once you're in this window, you can uncheck the split screen and get rid of it, but it's a really nice feature to have. So we'll, we'll just leave that there. All right, so that's Apple CarPlay. I want to get back to the uh, BMW main menu, so I just press that and I'm back. Okay, so that's Apple CarPlay and your phone. So now we're gonna go over to navigation. So here you can just enter an address right here. It may ask you for a state or a province, and if it does it, just click on one, and then I can go um, here, we'll go to Okay, there's Minneapolis. Should be able to hit OK. Okay, and then we can type in uh, a, a street. So, there we go. A house number. And then start guidance. I don't know where I programmed that to, but that's how you do it. The other question is then, how do you cancel a route? Well, if I go up here, click on the flag, I can click Stop Guidance. You can also mute the vo the, the Navigation is not... So you can mute the volume navigation from the navigation. Is not active. All right, right down here, you can look at traffic info. And down here, you can get map information. So what's gonna show up on your uh, navigation? Points of interest, anything that's checkmarked is gonna show, anything that isn't, uh, check mark will not show, so you can adjust that. Okay, and then of course you got this button down here that just allows you to change how the map looks like. Are you facing north, direction of travel, the perspective? Um, you can you do have this auto zoom feature down here, which is really cool. That goes to full map. Okay, so I am going to leave the interactive map. Okay. So, the, but the easiest way to do um, navigation is through voice command. So I'm just going to press and release the voice command button and see if we can program her out. Navigate to McDonald's. McDonald's 11 325 Highway 55, Minneapolis. Say yes or select another entry from the list. Four. McDonald's 9315 Medicine Lake Road, Minneapolis was selected. Guidance has been started. And there you go. Now, if you want to cancel it, same thing. Push the voice command button. Cancel navigation. Guidance has been stopped. All right. So you can see that using that voice command is just way easier than using the typed in part. But it's there if you want it. Okay. I'm going to click my home button right here. 
All right, that was navigation. We're gonna go over here. You've got weather. All right, so you get a nice weather report. Again, we can get rid of that uh, screen right here. There you go, and then you get a full screen uh, view. You can, in that, you can look at what's the weather at your current location, at your destination, or at a different location, then you can pick it on the map. And then, of course, the volume here, um, current Morning weather. Temperature 33, afternoon 47, evening 40 and no. All right, so you can actually have it read it for you. I'm gonna go back here and click on here. And then I can look at my vehicle information here. So under here, we've got a bunch of different settings. Um, so under vehicle settings, what's nice is a, they kind of give you a second screen over here that shows you what's under that particular thing. So the menu changes. All right. All right. And then you can change it right there. So I'm gonna go back and we're gonna go back one more here and we'll go to vehicle settings. All right, so under lighting, you have interior lighting and exterior lighting. So basically you would just want to click on it and then it brings it up, shows you a little graphic so I can click on it again and now I can change the color of the ambient lighting in the car, okay, by clicking up here and selecting the you know myriad of possibilities here. And we can't see it in this light, but that it shows you in the picture where it is. Click the arrow to go back. You can adjust the brightness. Again, it's a click drag or plus minus. Um, the speakers in this car light up. So right here, you can either turn that feature off or turn it on and you can see the brightness or dimness of the speakers. Accent lighting in the rear can be turned on and then the brightness uh, can be controlled. And then d you can select this for dimmed for nighttime driving. So lots of little adjustments there. And the exterior lighting would be the same thing. You just click on it, go through the different items. Check marks again means things are on. If it's not check marked, it's off. So I'm gonna go back here, one more. All right, you can go down to doors and key. All right, so here it gives you another full menu on the left and a partial menu on the right. So under driver's door, we can, uh, what does the unlock button do? Does it open the driver's door only or all doors? Just click on the one that you want. Kind of wish it would just switch right in that screen instead of taking to another screen, but that's okay. Um, tailgate, okay, you can say I want it to, the button to open just the tailgate or I want it to open tailgates and doors. All right, uh, we'll, we'll leave that there to driver's door only. All right, uh, anything that's checkmarked under here, um, it's just a click again, so unlock at the end of the trip or don't unlock at the end of the trip. So it's a simple click. Again, checkmark means it's on. Intelligent safety. All right, so here uh, is all the sort of the safety systems, uh, and depending on what you click on, you get different things. For instance, pedestrian warning is active, okay? It's not gonna let me configure that one. If I go to frontal collision warning, I can select early, medium, or late. And always the earlier is the better choice to make there, but you would click to make the change. Lane departure. Okay, do I want it always on? Do I want it reduced so it isn't quite as, uh, you know, it doesn't tug on the wheel maybe quite so hard or turn it off completely? Usually we would leave that on to always. Uh, and then you can click on or off if you want the steering wheel to be turned. So it'll turn the wheel for you and pull you back into your lane. You don't want that, click that off. Blind spot detection will work the same way. You click on here and then you can adjust early, medium, late or off. All right, so all of these are gonna work the same way. And you can, if it's check mark, you just click it on or off. If it's, it gives you another item here, you click on it, and then you can make the adjustment from the second window. Steering wheel vibration, strong, medium, or light. Just click on the one that you want. And then, you know, of course, speed warning and driver attention control. Now, let's go down here for a minute to uh, iDrive. Okay, so on under iDrive, you can change, you know, look at mobile devices, headphones and remote control, wireless charging tray. If we click on that one here, you can click on to have a forgotten mobile device alert. So if you step out of the car and you don't have, you forgot your phone, it's going to alert you. All right, you can check that on or off. Rear seat entertainment. So here, uh, in order to run the screens from the rear, you need to enable it. So you wanna make sure that's limit, that's set. 
Um, if you don't like, for instance, you only want them doing media and radio because they can send you navigation uh, suggestions from the rear. If you don't want that kind of stuff, you want to press limited. And if you don't want them to run it from the rear at all, you can disable it. Okay, I'm gonna leave it on enabled. Uh, and then you can also do a volume limit for them. Okay, gestures. This car does have gesture control. Okay, so certain things like if I go up here and I turn my finger, you can see the volume going up and down. Um, you know, it'd be interesting in the comments if you, you would think you might find that useful or not. Personally, I, 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 I don't like it. That's just me. I don't think I would ever use it. Um, I think it's just as easy to use your plus and minus right on the steering wheel. Your hands aren't off the wheel at all. But that's me, so leave, us, leave a comment down below. Uh, you can adjust the touchpad. On the displays here, uh, this does have a HUD display. We can't show you because it's very bright out today, but it's a nice clear picture right off the end of your hood. That's where at least where it looks like it's sitting. If I, if I click on a heads-up display, I can adjust the brightness, the height, and the rotation. So the rotation is going to move it left or right, of course, and the height going up and down. Um, that I really like it when they include the rotation. Not all cars do that. Uh, because depending on how you sit in the seat, you might be slightly off the left or right, and then you can adjust that uh, heads-up display to look correct. You can have it standard, okay, or reduced, all right? You can customize it to individual, and then under individual, you can say, here are the things that I want. You get three choices, entertainment and phone, check control messages, and speed limit exceeded. Otherwise, you just leave it on standard. Standard gives you the most information, gives you turn by turn, just like you see in the screen here, except for it shows up in your windshield. All right, I'm gonna go back here. Uh, control display, okay? You can turn off control display if you don't want that, the heads HUD display, and you can do adjust the brightness at night. Under the instrument panel one, again, you can have standard, reduced, or individual. Okay, and it changes slightly what shows up on the dashboard here. Okay, date and time. Now, you can click uh, here, but you can also just click right on the clock and it takes you to there. That's the simplest way. You can adjust your time there. You can change your units right here. I, um, I like it that they give you uh, lots of choices so you can customize what you want to change. An example would be you're traveling to Canada and so you want your, um, you know, your, maybe your consumption to be in, or your distance, to, you want your distance to be, say, in kilometers per hour because that's what the signs are reading, but you want your temperature still at Fahrenheit. All right. Bowers and Wilkins Tone. Now, we've seen this before. This is just another way to get to it. And you've got the second menu right up here that you can just click on. Okay, let's go back down here. Uh, contents of main menu. So on navigation, you can have navigation or arrow display. Okay? Uh, so it wouldn't actually show you the map, it just show you the arrows where you're turning. Uh, onboard info simplified or onboard info. Okay? You can have drive analysis. So depends on what you want under my vehicle. Hey, under connected drive, you can look at weather, news, wiki local, and Flickr. We saw those over there and we were kind of flicking through them. You can set driver profiles there. You can look at your vehicle status right here. You can check your tire pressures, but you can also do that through voice command. So if I go back here, get out of that screen for a minute. What are my tire pressures? Tire pressure monitor. Please continue using manual control. Okay, so it brings me to the screen and then it wants me to use manual control, but you can see it. Uh, so that's kind of cool on voice command. I haven't seen that before. All right. Technology in action here. You can have efficient dynamics and you can click on that. And then you can take a look at the dynamics of what's happening here. And you get um, a nice graphic here and you can, it'll show you sport, uh, comfort adaptive and uh, eco pro. All right, you can do sport displays. That's a really cool one, right up on your infotainment screen. All right, driving information. Onboard computer, if you want that, you can click on here, and then you get a nice full screen graphic of it. Down here, you can look at your trip computer, same thing. 
This one here will allow you to reset all the values. All right, hit the home button here, go back to my vehicle. All right, and then there's a digital owner's manual right here, but I always think it's easier just to watch our video. And if you want to see all the techie goobledy gawk on the regulatory notes, you can look at that. Moving over here to notifications, okay? Um, continue driving as possible, inflate tires. You saw the tires were a little bit low. Uh, fuel reserve here, so there's there's enough fuel left, but there's, uh, it's, if you look on the dashboard, it'll tell you you got how many miles you got left. The other thing you can do is if you uh, turn on this button right here, it's right by the hazard button, this takes you right to all of your safety systems here, and you can say I want all on, individual, or all off. Um, you obviously would want them all on. If you do individual, you can then configure it and say, this is the screen we saw before, right? So typically you just want those all on, but you, you can configure them in either screen. All right, so let's take a look at the camera system. And the easiest way to do that without putting it in reverse is there is a camera button uh, located just to the left of the shifter. If I click that, all right. So that's the rear camera. Um, if I click there, I can do the contrast, add uh, an activation point. I can show activation points, and there's none currently selected. And I'll show you what that is in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to put it in drive then, and use the camera button again. And now I've got the front camera. If I click on front here, settings. Under settings, you get act, uh, automatic pedestrian detection, um, activation, and then pedestrian detection with braking intervention. Parking assistant, okay. Sound of parking space is detected. That's the only thing you can turn off or on there. Um, this does have the parking assist, so uh, you can turn that on and it will automatically, you want to find a uh, parking spot, it'll do a, par uh, a parallel park or a diagonal park. So, um, but it'll do, er it'll do everything. It'll change the gears, the brakes, accelerate, everything. You can look at uh, cross traffic alert on or off there. Panorama view, okay, that's check marked. All right, so let's go back. Under this menu, it says add activation point. It's gonna take you to the navigation map, and basically what it does is if there's a certain point where you always want your camera to come on without you pushing the button, you can actually pre-program a GPS point, and when you get to that point, the cameras will automatically come on, which is really cool. You pull into an enclosed garage or something, and you want that camera always to come on, it'll do that. First thing when you just put it in reverse. So I can have, for instance, a front on view and any of these points, I can just rotate it. That That's just really, really neat. I, I absolutely love that, that view. Okay. okay, don't know why it wouldn't show up when I just had it in park before, but once I put it in reverse and then put it back into park, it worked. So this is showing you any obstacle that's in the way, that little orange fencing that you saw there. That's where it's detecting an obstacle. Okay. But that, those views are just fantastic. If I go here, anywhere there's a camera icon. And then if I leave it on auto, it'll sense whether it needs the front or rear camera. And of course, you got the dynamic swivel guidelines right there. But a phenomenal camera system. All right, otherwise, that's it for the driver screen and infotainment screen on the 2019 BMW 760i. And again, this is the M series. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.